Next up we have another live lightning talk called How Emacs Became My Awesome Java Editing Environment by Torstein. He's getting ready. I think we're good to go. All right, cool. Hello, everyone. I'm Torstein, and um, I've been an Emacs user since I was in university. So I've been using Emacs pretty much every day since 2008. And unfortunate for me, my, if not favorite language, my main language has been Java. And I have tried everything uh, to get Emacs to become a great Java development environment. Um, been through everything from pure Java mode, JDE, to Malabar, JDE bug, Equim, and now LSP Java. And I think with LSP and DIP uh, for the debugger, uh, Emacs has really finally become my main Java environment. I don't need to have IntelliJ as a backup solution anymore. And uh, that's what I will show you today. I have a number of requirements when talking about using Emacs for Java. It needs to be easy to set up. It must scale. It must take. Uh, it must handle large projects. By my large, I mean our CMS that my company creates uh, has 7,000 Java classes. It's about uh, three times the size of Tomcat that you may know. And it needs to handle that and needs to switch between the projects easily. So seeing is believing, obviously. So I will show a number of things that I consider a must have for a Java environment. Uh, auto completion, code navigation, needs to jump, you know, jump to the source of third party libraries, static imports, not only imports, running JUnit tests from within Emacs, the linting, um, and also a lot of the features that Eclipse and IntelliJ users have come to appreciate that the IDE takes care of you. You just write you know, approximately what you want it to happen, and then the editor fixes things for you. So in order to show a lot of these things, I create a small, small Java project called Cheese Shop. And I've used test-driven development here to show you some of the features and how it feels to, to work in Emacs now. So on the right-hand side, you can see the shortcuts I'm using. So uh, let's see. So uh, let's see. OK, so we have a cheese shop. So let's start by writing a test, um, testing an empty shop. Um, let's see. So I can now import the test. And um, I know I create this cheese shop new. Doesn't, yeah. There. And then assert equals. And then it figures like that it needs to step to statically import this. And if I ask the shop for the customers, which is, should be a list, then uh, zero should be returned. And Emacs, of course, figures out that customers, it doesn't exist. So create that for me, please. And it didn't know what to do, so it created an object. And that needs to be list against customer which has two problems. One is that list isn't imported. So let me import that. And the other is customer doesn't exist. So Emacs can now create customer for me. There, that's much better. Um, then of course it needs to return something. And that should be a field. And it needs to be instantiated. And it needs to be an error list. And here, See, I don't even need to spell spell it correctly. It will also complete it for me with the correct case. Uh, let's see. There. So now I should be able to run my test. OK, excellent. So we have proven that no customers is indeed an empty shop. Very good. Um, let's do one more. Um, can enter shop. So that's the same thing. Uh, I have a cheese shop. And now I create one of these customers that I just created. It needs a name. And then I say shop enter customer. And if a customer has entered a shop, then there should be one customer in the shop. Uh, hang on. Customer size there. A couple of problems Emacs has pointed out for me. One is that name doesn't exist, so create a local variable called name. 
and um, they'll call them join. What else is wrong? It says the constructor doesn't exist, so create that. And we need to do something with that name. So we assign it to a, a field, member variable, which doesn't exist, so create it for me. Then it says name doesn't isn't used, so do use it for something. So we create a two string method there. Um, next problem, uh, enter doesn't exist. So create it and then let's rerun the test and see if it works. Um, let's see, that didn't go too, down too well. Why didn't that work? Um, Okay, well, we need to fix it. one thing in any case. Uh, we need, when a customer enters, the shop should be added. And now I can show, uh, when we're refactoring things here, I can do LSP rename, um, because I like all my parameter variables to be prefixed with pay. So, so Emacs supports that. And obviously this is, you know, real renaming. It's not uh, search and replace renaming. Um, what else? Okay, let's try to run it again. There, awesome. Um, then we now also have a number of graphical things. Um, we can do LSP three max symbols. And we have a nice nice symbol browser. And um, we also have a three max dependency Java dependency list, which both lets you look at the dependencies, but it's also a, you can use it as a project navigator. And you can see all the uh, libraries on, in the Java runtime environment, as well as any Maven dependencies that you've added in your pom file. That's really cool. I will finish off with a third test. <clears throat> uh, and this is, uh, will be lots of customers. I want to see if, if my code handles that many customers enter um enter my shop and for that i will create a loop um let's see number doesn't exist so it should be a local variable i want 100 customers customer customer equals new customer now let's see i just call everyone john and plus that one and then they all enter the shop and when they're done, uh, so it should be that. And then, of course, you all know that this will work great, but there is a problem. There is a problem in our code, and there are a lot of customers here to iterate through. And we know that at customer, when uh, the 81st customer, then the bug triggers. and now Emacs has conditional breakpoints in the debugger, the DAP Java debugger. Um, so then we can do DAP breakpoint add and DAP breakpoint condition, and it can say I equals 80. Um, DAP UI sessions, yeah. So if I now run this test in the debugger, it will stop when i is 80. You can see it here in the local browser. Uh, you can also see... Sorry, two minutes? Yeah. <laughs> two years, that's perfect. Uh, so you also have it on the mouse, mouse pointer here, and um, that's useful. And you also have, you can make it display inline the way IntelliJ does it these days. And the debugger lets you navigate, of course, through your own source code, but also into uh, any third party library. So here I. Uh, steps into the Java runtime environment itself. Um, very useful. So I think my Emacs is uh, is a good option for Java development, uh, not only for Emacs diehards, but Emacs users in general. If you like using Emacs for for scripting and org and so on, and you happen to have Java at work, uh, I think. You know, it, it's a it's a good recommendation these days. Uh, thank you for everyone that's made this possible, and um, thank you for listening. 
Thank you. There's a quick question. Do you use smart parents or snippets in your Java workflow or is it mainly LSP? Uh, for snippets, I use Yas or how you pronounce it, yet another snippet uh, engine. That's what I use for the for the test stubs and for the for loop. Did that answer, answer the question? Yep, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thorstein.